The Ronskian Determinant, an Introduction. Our objectives for this little demonstration is to define the Ronskian determinant, to demonstrate the use of the Ronskian determinant, and to explain what the Ronskian determinant actually tells us. Some materials to review would be derivatives and, of course, determinants. A little vocabulary. Let y1, y2, all the way up to yn be a set of functions, each of which possesses n minus 1 derivatives on an interval i. The determinant shown below is called the Ronskian determinant, or just the Ronskian, of the given set of functions. And if you notice, the matrix is set up so that the set of functions makes up the first row, the first derivative of each function makes up the second row, the second derivative of each function would then make up the third row, all the way down to the last row of this matrix would be made up by the n minus 1 derivative of each function. And here is the theorem. Let y1 through yn be a set of n solutions of an nth order linear homogeneous differential equation. This set is linearly independent if and only if the Ronskian is not identically zero. Our first example, we're asked to determine the Ronskian for the following set of functions, 1 minus x, 1 plus x, and 2 minus x squared. We shall proceed as follows. Here we have set up the Ronskian determinant where we can see the functions are in the first row of our matrix. The first derivative functions are in the second row of the matrix, and the second derivative functions occupy the third row of the matrix. We compute this determinant out to be negative 4 after doing all the arithmetic, so our Ronskian is negative 4. For our second example, we shall determine the Ronskian of the set x, x squared, and x to the fifth. We perform the following computation, and here we have set up our matrix with the functions as the first row of the matrix, the first derivative functions as the second row, and again the second derivative functions on the third row. We'll go through and compute the determinant, and we get 12x to the fifth for the Ronskian. Note that while this result can equal zero when x equals zero, but the theorem explicitly states the determinant must be identically zero. So there are values for x for which the Ronskian is not zero. So you can have specific x values that make a Ronskian zero, but the theorem specifically states that you should not have to do that. If you want the Ronskian to be zero, it should be identically zero. Our third example is to determine whether the set of e to the x, x times e to the x, and x plus 1 times e to the x is a set of linearly independent solutions of the linear homogeneous differential equation, uh, third derivative of y minus 3 times the second derivative of y plus 3 times the first derivative of y minus y equals 0. So we're going to apply this Ronskian determinant idea to see if we have a linearly independent set of solutions to this differential equation. So we'll verify that each of the functions is indeed a solution to this differential equation. And this uh, can be done by direct uh, computation. And now that when this is completed, we can go ahead and compute the Ronskian. Here we have our Ronskian with our functions on the first row from our set. The first derivative functions make up the second row in our matrix and the second derivative functions will make up the third row in our matrix. We go ahead and compute the determinant and we end up with zero. So this set is linearly dependent. There is no x value that we can pick that would not make this Ronskian zero. Everything uh, added up to zero explicitly. No dependencies whatsoever on the, among the variables. So th this set of functions is linearly dependent. You could also note that 1 times e to the x 
plus 1 times x times e to the x minus 1 times x plus 1 e to the x equals 0, implying that x plus 1 times e to the x is a linear combination of e to the x and x times e to the x. And this would also state the solutions are not linearly independent. Thank you for your time and attention.